Hi, my name is Liza Lenesa, and my report is all about the wave theory and its types. First, what is wave? Wave is formed when the wind blows over a body of water. When a wave gets near the shore, the wave in the bottom drags against the seafloor while the top keeps moving. And the wave gets narrower and higher and eventually topples over the bodies of water. Then the wave theory, or in geology, the seismic waves are the waves of energy caused by the sudden breaking of rock within the earth or an explosion. They are the energy that travels through the earth and is recorded on seismographs. Seismic wave fields are recorded by a seismometer, hydrophone in water, or accelerometer. There are two types of wave theory or seismic wave, the body wave and the surface wave. First, the body wave. It is traveling through the interior of the earth. Body waves arrive before the surface wave emitted by an earthquake. These waves are of a higher frequency than the surface wave. There are two kinds of body wave, the P wave and the S wave. P wave or primary wave is the first kind of body wave. This is the fastest kind of seismic wave, and consequently, the first to arrive at a seismic station. The P wave can move through solid rocks and fluids, like water or the liquid layers of the earth. It pushes and pulls the rock it moves through just like sound waves push and pull the air. P waves are also known as compressional waves because of the pushing and pulling they do. Subjected to a P wave, particles move in the same direction that the wave is moving in, which is the direction that the energy is traveling in and is sometimes called the direction of wave propagation. Next is S wave or secondary wave. It's the second kind of body wave, in which is the second wave you feel in an earthquake. An S wave is slower than a P wave and can only move through solid rock, not through any liquid medium. It is the property of S wave that led seismologists to conclude that the Earth's outer core is a liquid. S wave move rock particles up and down or side to side perpendicular to the direction that the wave is traveling in, the direction of wave propagation. The second type of wave theory or seismic wave is surface wave. Surface wave is traveling only through the crust. Surface waves are of a lower frequency than body waves and are easily distinguished on a seismogram as a result, though they arrive after body waves. It is surface waves that are almost entirely responsible for the damage and destruction associated with earthquakes. This damage and the strength of the surface waves are reduced in deeper earthquakes. There are two kinds of surface wave, the love wave and the Rayleigh wave. Love wave is the first kind of surface wave. It is named after A. E. H. Love, a British mathematician who worked out the mathematical model for this kind of wave in 1911. It's the fastest surface wave and moves the ground from side to side, confined to the surface of the crust. Love waves produce entirely horizontal motion. Lastly, the Rayleigh wave. Rayleigh wave is the other kind of surface wave. It is named for John William Strutt, Lord Rayleigh, who mathematically predicted the existence of this kind of wave in 1885. A Rayleigh wave rolls along the ground just like wave rolls across a lake or an ocean. Because it rolls, it moves the ground up and down and side to side in the same direction that the wave is moving. Most of the shaking felt from an earthquake is due to the Rayleigh wave, which can be much larger than the other waves. Good morning, ma'am. My name is George Benjamin Beltran, and my report is about the different factors that affect wave velocity. First, what is wave? A wave is a disturbance that transfers energy through space. There are two types of waves, which is transverse waves and longitudinal waves. Wave velocity. Wave velocity is a distance traversed by a periodic or cyclic motion per unit time in any direction. Wave velocity in, in common usage refers to speed, although properly, velocity implies both speed and direction. The velocity of a wave is equal to the product of its wavelength and frequency number of vibration per second, and is independent of its intensities. Velocities of wave is the distance of propagation per unit time in the fixed direction of the wave. One of the main factors that affect wave velocity is medium. 
if a point vibrates within a rigid solid, both transverse waves and longitudinal waves of the same frequency are sent out. And because the long longitudinal waves happen to have longer wavelengths, they will move faster. Thus, seismic waves being composed of both longitudinal waves, which is the P primary waves, and transverse waves, which is the S secondary waves, move with two velocities through the Earth. So, good morning, ma'am. Good morning, classmates. My name is Frances Eliza Gabane, and I will be talking about the difference between static and dynamic moduli elasticity. So, ano nga ba ang modulus of elasticity? So, modulus of elasticity, also called a young modulus. It is a material property that describes its stiffness. Pag sinabi pong stiffness, it is not easy to bend. It is a lack of flexibility. So, one of the most important properties of solid materials is the stiffness. So, mechanical deformation puts energy into material. The energy is stored strain. Modulus elasticity is a constant that relates stress and strain. By Hooke's law, we all know that stress is directly proportional to strain. So, static moduli elasticity refers to elastic stiffness that relates deformation to applied stress in quasi-static loading situation. That is the slope of the stress strain curve. So, pag sinabi pong quasi-static uh, loading situation, ayun po yung pag-apply ng loads ng dahan-dahan or napakabagal. Kaya, hindi po magkakos ng paggalaw doon sa ating materials. So, yung dynamic modular elasticity naman po, sometimes complex modulus. It is the ratio of stress to strain under vibratory conditions. So, kabaliktara naman po ito ng static modular elasticity, yung ating dynamic modular elasticity is stress under po ng uh, vibration. So, halimbawa po, uh, nilagay yung loads ng mabilis or ano, nagkukos po ng vibration doon sa materials natin. So, ayun po. So, calculated from data obtained from either free or forced vibration in share compression, or elongation. It is a property of viscoelastic materials. So, pag sinabi pong viscoelastic materials, ito po yung mga materials na nagtataglay ng viscous at ng elasticity. Pag sinabi pong elasticity, yun po yung kakayahan ng materials na bumalik sa sarili niyang form pagkatapos niyang ma-stretch or ma-compress. Yung viscous naman po, siya po ay yun, siya po ay mayroong sticky consistency na tinatawag between solid and liquid. So, ang example po nun ay yung honey. So, ayun. So, yung viscoelastic materials is nagtataglay ng ganong klaseng, uh, ganong klaseng characteristic. Being viscous and being, being elastic. So, ang example po nung mga viscoelastic materials ay yung mga polymers po natin. So, ayun lang po. Thank you. Good day everyone. My name is Hannah Julian Cascalso and my topic is about grouting. So, ang grout ay composite material na pinaghalo-halo na binubuo ng tubig, buhangin at semento. Um, ginagamit ito sa pag-fill or pagpupuno ng mga bitak or mga gaps na ginagamitan ng machines or mga elements ng iba pang structures um pagsisil ng mga joints and pagbubukas ng mga surfaces. So ang grouting ay ang paglalagay ng material which is yung grout sa mga bitak na concrete or masonry structures para sa pagdagdag ng capacity ng mga load bearing structures dahil pinupuno nito yung mga connections katulad ng 
steel base plates or ginagamit din ito sa pag-stop ng mga leakages or paglalagay ng adhesives and sa pagpapanatag ng lupa. Ginagamit ang grouting sa pag-aayos ng mga, yun nga ng mga bitak ng concrete um, sa pagpupuno ng mga spaces or gaps sa mga tiles. Ginagamit din ito sa pag ng mga gaps. And ginagamit din ito sa waterproofing. And ginagamit din ang grouting sa pagdagdag ng lakas ng mga pundasyon ng mga load-bearing structures. May different types ng grouting. Una, yung cement grouting. Ang cement grouting ay ang ginagamit sa pagsisil ng mga wide cracks. Um, katulad sa mga gravity dams, canal linings, foundations, at sa mga makakapal na concrete walls. And ginagamit din ito sa pagpapatatag ng mga machine foundations, mga base plates, kaya naman anchor bolts. Ang cement grouting ay nahahati sa tatlong klase, depende sa size ng particles. Ordinary Portland Cement Grout, Microfine Cement Grout, and Ultrafine Cement Grout. First is yung Ordinary Portland Cement Grout. Ito ay ang um, most common type ng grout na ginagamit sa pag repair ng mga bitak ng mga concrete. Ginagamit itong ordinary Portland cement grout sa mga wider cracks kasi ang particulate size ng OPC ay 15 microns. Microfine cement grout, so ito ay yung finely ground slag, fine fly ash, or kaya naman Portland cement na pinaghalo-halo sa tubig for allowing penetration sa mga fine cracks. Silica flume or any other fine pozzolana can also be used sa microfine. Ang particulate size naman ng microfine cement grout ay 6 to 10 microns. Ultrafine cement grout. Ito naman ang ginagamit para sa mga maninipis na cracks. Um, dahil Meron itong particulate size na 3 to 5 micron. Next naman na type ng grouting is chemical grouting. Ito ay consists ng polymers such as acrylic, polyurethane, sodium silicate, epoxy, or any other suitable polymer. Ang chemical grouts ay emulsion ng water and liquid resin. Ang chemical grouting ay ang pag-i-inject ng mga formulated chemical grouts na ginagamit sa mga maninipis na cracks na hindi kaya ng cement grout. Ang chemical grouting ay most suitable or nagagamit sa mga moist environments and kaya ang mag-fill ng mga maninipis na cracks. There are grouting techniques. So, papakita ko sa inyo yung video kung paano ginagawa yung mga grouting techniques. Una is yung cement grouting. Next naman is yung chemical grouting. Ang pang third naman ay ang fracture grouting.
Pang fourth naman natin ay ang polyurethane grouting. Next is yung jet grouting, single fluid. Next is jet grouting, double fluid. And ang last naman ay ang jet grouting triple fluid. And that's all for our reporting. Thank you for listening.